Welcome to Cisco Spark. This is Susan from Meet Me in the Cloud, and this short video will show you the process of assembling a brand new Cisco Spark board. So our Spark board arrived in our office. It looked like this, a huge brown box on a huge wooden pallet. So we just started opening the box. We snipped the straps that hold the box to the wooden pallet and opened up the larger box on the outside of the two smaller boxes on the inside. The small box in front is the stand. We ordered a 55 inch spark board with a stand. We just didn't feel like we had any wall space to put it on the wall and the stand seemed like a great idea. So those are the two boxes. The instructions said to open up the stand and assemble it first. So we opened up the stand box and laid all the parts out onto the floor. The two large metal parts that look like triangles are the legs for the spark board stand and the big white piece of plastic is the tray. And on the left hand side, you see some additional metal poles and those poles are used to connect the two legs to the stand. The spark board stand came with this hardware. All that we needed that didn't come with the board itself and the stand was an Allen wrench and a screwdriver. The rest of it was, was um, done with just these, these pieces of hardware. So we started adding the metal poles to one of the legs. We assembled those, we screwed them in, we screwed in the hard plastic feet, we tightened them up a little bit, and then we laid it on its side and attached the plastic tray. Then we set that on its side and added the second leg to the top of the assembly. Then we screwed in all of the parts, making careful, um, making making sure to carefully put the met the, the making sure to carefully put the rubber grommets around the metal pole, right where that plastic tray hits the metal pole. Those grommets were important because the cables of the spark board actually ultimately run through those grommets. So uh, Jerry did a good job of getting those in there properly. So then our spark board. Our sparkboard stand was assembled. It was laying on its back. We stood it up in the office and voila, there is our stand. Step two was to assemble the board. So we opened up the second box that contained our sparkboard. In that box were just these few parts. There was a box with three sparkboard pens, a cloth to clean the sparkboard, some cables, and an instruction manual. So we just opened up the box and pulled out the sparkboard stripped off all the styrofoam, took the board out of the box, laid it very carefully on its face on the carpeted floor to protect it and unwrapped it. Now on the back of the spark board, we took four pieces of hardware that came with the spark board stand and screwed those little pieces of hardware into the back four corners of the spark board itself. We screwed them in manually and then we tightened them with an Allen wrench. Now there's the board with the four pieces of hardware, each one in the corner. Those little four pieces of hardware are what are going to connect the spark board to the spark board stand. So we picked up the board and straightened it up, brought it over to the spark board stand. We put the stand in place because we thought this thing's going to be pretty heavy when it's done. It actually took a couple of us. So the gal in the middle is holding the weight of the spark board while the two people on either end of the board are guiding those little four pieces of hardware on the back of the board into the metal poles that make up the spark board stand. So you can see here, this is what it looks like in the back. The, the, um, the little metal pieces of hardware on the bottom of the spark board slid into the metal poles on the stand pretty easily. We struggled a little bit with the ones on the top. We had to jimmy it and jiggle it a little bit, but ultimately everything went in tight and flush. And then we just used the screwdriver and started to tighten it all up, screwing it all down, tightening that up, making sure it's stable. It doesn't wiggle. Everything looked really good. So the last thing that we did in terms of assembly was to plug the cables in. We plugged them into the bottom of the spark board. The cables run through those rubber grommets. So that's the purpose of the, you'll notice when you put this together that the grommet has sort of one end of it is open. It's open to accept these, these cables from the spark board. And then we attached the end caps for the tray itself. Just gently place them in, put them in place, screwed them tight. You can see there the grommet on the back of the table has an opening to accept the cable from the spark board, whereas the grommet on the front of the spark board does not have that opening. So when you assemble it, put the ones with the opening on the back. <laughs> 
and then we screwed everything in tight with the screwdriver. There are the cables running uh, through the grommet and down through down the leg of the spark board stand. And you can see those two little plastic um, pieces. Those just snap the cable. They hold the cable to the to the stand, the leg of the stand. And there's Jerry just kind of pulling the cables down and snapping the cables to the stand so that they're out of the way. On the face of the spark board in the lower right corner is a magnetic location that holds one pen. So we attach the pen to the spark board and turned it on. And the first thing the board did was to confirm that it was indeed connected to a live network port and then it started to go through its setup process. It immediately wanted to update its own software so we let it run through that process. It didn't take long, maybe, maybe two minutes, um, and then the software was ready to go. Then this screen came up. So our Spark board needs to be registered to Cisco Spark. So we went into the other room to the computer. We logged into the Spark admin portal. We registered this room device to Spark admin. And at the end of the registration process, the Spark admin portal gave us a 16 digit code for this device. We walked back over to the device, plugged the 16 digit code onto this screen and everything worked. We noticed that the time was wrong, so we actually switched the time zone to our own local time. But other than that, it was easy to set up the board. In that room, we had a couple of people who had Spark running on their mobile devices, and our Spark board immediately recognized them and paired those three people's mobile device directly to the board. We didn't have to do anything at all. So then we were ready to create a space and begin. And now we're ready to teach our class. And that's the story of how we assembled our Cisco Spark board. At Meet Me in the Cloud, we deliver training on Cisco Spark and Cisco Spark boards. So come find us at meetmeinthecloud.com. Thank you for your time.